in the chat. Well, it's been an incredible year and we have a lot to share with you. And to really help me in talking about our year, I'm really excited to introduce Dana Spears Talbert. Ms. Dana is our Sun Program Manager. And I wanna tell you a bit about her. Dana first joined Impact back in 2004. Uh, at that time, she was wanting to leave the for-profit world to return to a place where she had once received services herself. And she started her time in Impact um, and her first passion was working with seniors and then later uh, moved to our youth and family services team as the Sun program manager. Uh, and going from being somebody who worked in our uh, recipient of our programs to managing them uh, gives Ms. Dana a real chance to advocate for the families that we, we support in real time. Um, as if that wasn't enough, Stana has been a foster parent to more than 30 children, which is really extraordinary, extraordinary contribution. Uh, a parent to three beautiful children, as well as a grandparent to three beautiful grandchildren, who lovingly refer to her as, am I get this right, Yaya? All right. That's correct. Welcome, welcome, Ms. Dana. That is, um, Thank you. I'm really, really happy to have a chance to talk to you this evening. Thanks for being here. Um, we'll also have time at the end uh, for any questions that you might have. So um, you can either unmute yourself or anytime you want to raise your hand. You also can put a note in the chat box. I think you know how this works. Um, and so we're really excited to, to see you here today. I'm gonna to share just real brief, some information uh, high level about what's been happening at Impact this year. I'm gonna share my screen and um, hopefully everybody can see this. I wanna start off by just kind of top level, uh, letting everybody know that um, we had, a, we had a, a big year and I don't have to tell you about the challenges facing our community. But I will tell you that we were at the front line of, of addressing those. And I'm really proud of the fact that we um, were able to serve over 17,000 people this year. That's more than the year before. And that's also considering for much of the year, um, we were um, socially distancing and not really able to see folks in person. And so our, our employees figured out how to not only continue to meet the needs of our, our clients, but, but do more. Uh, more than ever, um, and it's really extraordinary. Um, one thing that was great is we didn't have to say to folks, we didn't have to teach folks how to innovate or how to go above and beyond. They already know how to do that. And we knew that was true and it really came out this year. We're proud of the fact that more than half of the folks that we serve identify as folks who are indigenous, black, brown, melanated immigrant, or Asian as our community changes, uh, so is impact. Couple other real high level um, numbers I want to share with you. I'm real proud of this um, for our housing services uh, folks that we work with. After six months, 93% of those folks still house, and that's really the name of the game. Uh, and we did, uh, have done at least 33% more housing services than last year. And we distributed. Um, really more like a, a million dollars in client and rent assistance in our community. And that's significantly more than we've done in years past. So this is an organization of folks who are really on the front line of the pandemic recovery and response. And I'm really, really proud of our, um, our team and the efforts they've put there. We'll hear a little bit more about that in a minute. While we were doing all that this year, we were able to really continue to articulate who we are and what we're doing. One of the things that we are able to bring out this year was some new, newly stated values. Now, these are things that um, have always been true. Ms. Dana, you can speak to that. You've been with us for many, many years. We found the words to describe who we are and what we value. And um, four things really jumped out to us. One was uh, that we see the beauty in people. Um, and that means that humans are dynamic and complex and their challenge is doubly so. 
We seek to understand that complexity both with clients and each other. Self-care and empathy enable us to show up as our best authentic selves, being open to conversation, walking alongside our clients in their journey and recognizing the beauty of our shared experience. Um, maybe I can call on someone to read Promote Peace. Thanks, Ada. <laughs> this is the one that smiles, okay. <laughs> Promote Peace, we believe in shared success and know that when individuals are held back, our community is also held back. Providing help for those who need it most ultimately supports everyone. That's what peace means to us, a sense of justice and fairness that benefits the most people. Thank you, Ada. Nikki, you wanna read Put People First? Yes, I will. Hold on, let me get my eyes on. Systemic change requires the courage to do something different. We focus on what works, emphasizing the impact on human lives over theoretical pretenses. Many of our systems are structured around oppression and inequity, so working within them requires dismantling and rebuilding them. We start every conversation with the question, what do people really need? Thank you. And I'll, I'll go ahead and read the, the final one, which is um, find a way. Our work can be challenging, which is why it's critical to maintain optimism. We strive to be a leader in our space, knowing that the responsibility of long-term solutions ultimately lies with us. We are resourceful, tenacious, and willing to do the hard work of making a better future possible. So we're excited to share those with you, and that might be new for some of you. And in terms of words, but I, I think that you'll recognize those values in us and those of you that have known us or been part of us for a long time, recognize those values in yourself. Um, so we're, we see those show up every day. And in, and in particular, um, I wanted to ask you, Ms. Dana, how you are seeing uh, some of these values show up, especially this idea of we find a way um, you know, the, another way of saying that is um, we know how to do hard things, <laughs> which is certainly what this year brought. And I just was wanted to give you a little bit of, of time to, yeah, what have, what have you seen now in your, in your work about how people have found a way? Yes, thank you, Andy. And I'm so excited to be here. Um, what I've seen most is that um, obstacles related to parents not being able to understand technology has been the top one. And our staff have adapted um, to making it possible to assist families. So staff have met the families where they were, whether it was on their porch, in their car, outside of schools or in neighborhoods or in parks to introduce them to the internet, to show them how to upload documents, to show them how to send pictures of documents or um, resources or anything that they would need to, you know, prove to the school or to kind of receive services. Um, we've also had them show them how to like find where's Google Meet. I keep getting these invites to this Google Meet where my student has to be in class and I want to be a part of that, but I don't even know how to find that. So our staff have been out there, you know, on the ground showing families how to do that support. Um, I've seen them advocating to financially support families. Sun has a small budget to support programming. During the pandemic, staff roles really changed from being after school Sun site managers that offered these enrichment classes to being on call caseworkers and system navigators. Um, they supported the families in things that like paying for the rent, cable, water, insurance phones, childcare, transportation, groceries, uh, cleaning supplies, just to name a few. And these are things that Sun didn't um, originally do. We were, again, focusing on those. Uh, we had four pillars, but our main pillar was the enrichment class and wraparound services for the families. Um, we've seen our folks do hard things, supporting families who were overwhelmed with having their child home consistently without preparation, a plan, or an end date. 
I think that has affected a lot of us where you're just like, what am I going to do with this kid? <laughs> you know, and how am I going to entertain them? And when school was just trying to figure out like, how are we going to offer online school? When are kids going to be in class? Who's going to observe them? Son really stepped up. I've even had um, some of my staff that would sit in on some of the um, classes to support the teachers. So that's to name a few, but I have a host of other ways that we have been able to support and uh, ways that my staff have showed up. Staff have been creative in making sure the needs were met. We've um, engage families in like after hour lounge, like a support time for parents to pop online and just kind of download once kids were settled in and just like, what am I supposed to do? What were their assignments? Um, how long are they gonna be? There were so many questions when I start to look back on the beginning of the pandemic. And a lot of questions are still here. We're working out systems, but a lot of those questions are here. So we offered that virtual space for families to come and kind of just talk it over with, talk, have a conversation with an adult. <laughs> you know, because a lot of those conversations during that time were with our, our kids. Um, we delivered weekly food boxes, sanitation boxes to families. We delivered gift cards, whether it was put it in the mailbox, ring the doorbell, run to your car, send a text, let the family know that that item was there. Um, we also did some delivery of books, aka science kits and activity kits, just to keep the kids kind of busy. Um, oh. This. Oh, I, I, I've got more. I'm, I'm no, I, I just had a, I just had to throw a wow. I had to throw a wow in there. I just felt yes, like it was when you start so, to think back, you, there's a lot. Um, this past year, we found a way working outside of the box. In fact, there was no box. I, I when I started to kind of like download, it was like we were just working in a space. We advocated for clients. Um, we understood that we were living in a pandemic, and we still are. We didn't have answers, so we were doing things unconventional. We had to ask for things that we wanted. We had to write letters with families regarding hardships. We had to make phone calls because there was no clear date to when the unemployment check was gonna be deposited. Um, we had to approach the previous no's in hopes for present yes, while still supporting the family. Um, this year we were able to see, we weren't able to see clients in person. This was challenging because most of our families um, we met at the school. So when they had a need, they were able to come into the school, call us, we could meet them. All of that we could not, we could no longer do. We were the second eyes on the kids. And that was one of the hardest pieces is not being able to see our kiddos face to face or in person. Um, and that was hard as well on the staff, as well as the families and the students. So we had to continue offering some of these relationships just in a different way. So we had to come up with just innovative things like, okay, we're going to do this virtual class. We're going to sit this activity kit on your porch and we're going to stand out in the yard and put this kit together and hopes that you are entertained by this for a couple hours just to give your parent a break. So just things like that really made, I think, the SUN program and families really look at us different and really know that we are consistent resource there. And we're not just that enrichment piece, but we are also like we're part of the family, we're part of the school, we, we are really here. So I think that families have really used SUN in a different way. Um, I'd also like to just think back also about what amazing things that we have done over the year. We've also really found a way, and I like to say that SUN has been like dropping the mic in the unconventional ways. Like when we do things, we're just like, we did that, like, and it worked out and, and it was good and everyone's happy. And so that that's just a few things that I've seen over this year. Yeah, wow, wow, just, that is amazing. Um, you know, your team in particular was so high performing and it, you know, running an after school program, Sun Schools United Neighborhoods, it's a lot anyway. Mm -hmm. And given the conditions, it was extraordinary. Now, I can't help but notice, but behind that team, a high-functioning team, there's always a leader, and that's you. And, um, you know, when I think about the people who showed up for our community during this pandemic, we, we think about the folks that run the front lines at hospitals. And, I mean, the work that they did was absolutely extraordinary. 
even people that continue to show up at Safeway or uh, at Grocery Outlet, and so everybody had food. But then there's people like you, and I think that um, I just want to shine a light on you, Miss Dana, and because your ability to keep your team motivated which then allowed them to go out there and provide extraordinary service is really one of the keys to, to the work that, and the success that we've had not only in our community, but really nationally. So thank you for being one of those heroes and for really stepping up every day as you have since 2004. Thank you. We have, a con we have time for any, anybody who has a comment or a question, like to get you involved. Um, don't have to put you on the spot but you've got the mic. How about you, Scott Murphy? There's gotta be something that is occurring to you at this moment. Um, well, first of all, I'd just like to say I'm, I'm proud of you guys. I knew you, you, you'd you keep the momentum that I, when I was more a part of it that I saw. So it's just, I was curious what adaptations needed to happen, you know, once COVID hit, um, because I think we can all, it impacted all of us and impacted some more than others. And, and that the people that you guys are helping, it's just obvious. It was clear to me that they were probably impacted the most, you know, and everybody kind of got into their hole. So anyway, I, I just, I'm very honored to, to see what you guys have done and, and my small part that I've been along the way, just kind of watching and observing um, to see you guys kind of show the determination, resiliency, and then transfer it on to the people you help. I mean, it's, it's pretty special. So to, to me, I'm just, just wanted to hear it and, and I hadn't heard it in a while and it's good to hear it. And so keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's really good work. Appreciate it, Scott. And um, Lori, not to put you on the spot, but I wanted to give you a chance if you want to add any questions or anything you wanted to say. Don't have to. No, I just, I appreciate what you do. And I appreciate that I can just let you do it, you know, and, and um, I hear being way out here in Western Washington County, I don't, I hear only what's brought up in the news. And, um, you know, it's a little disconcerting. Okay. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> Um, especially, you know, when it comes right now, you know, hearing a lot about the rent relief that's not coming through and, and the people who are so severely impacted and looking at a future that's very uncertain to them. Um, and knowing that you're out there with, with your, your public or our public that you serve, um, just taking care of it as, you know, it's good to know. Good to yeah. Well, thanks so much. It is 5.50. My clock says 20 minutes. It's called 20 minutes of impact. So we're gonna we're gonna end it. Um, I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight, especially you, Stana. Thank you for filling us in on some of the work that you're doing, and thanks for being truly a hero in our community. Thank Take care, you. everybody.